Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Um, I'm Matt Hobash from the Food Bank, and I, I want to welcome everybody today for a, what I, is an absolutely terrific announcement. Um, joining uh, me today, um, obviously, are folks that don't need an introduction. Governor Ted Strickland and uh, the director of the Ohio Association of Second Harvest Food Banks, Lisa Hanbrook Fugit, as well as David Ghost and Jason Wetzel from Walmart. Um, very pleased to be here today um, to, as they're going to uh, make an announcement here very soon. But just prior to starting, just want to kind of give you a sense, um, as it will come as no surprise, in terms of the challenges that um, food banks are facing throughout the state of Ohio. Um, and across the United States with the um, continued um, economic downturn and recession. Um, to give you a little perspective on, on our situation, um, demand for food is up 14% this year over last year. It was up 10% that year and over 8% the year before. So we've gone 8, 10, and 14% in terms of the request for help that we are seeing in our 20 county service territory. And those numbers are, are, are similar, and if not in some cases worse, than some of the other food banks here in Ohio. There are 12 food banks throughout Ohio. Um, one of the challenges that, that we continue to face is, is trying to meet that demand. Last Thursday and Friday, we gave out over a million pounds of food. You know, we distribute about 30 million pounds of food in a year, to put that in perspective. You know, fortunately for us, we're finding the food. Um, the challenge with it is, unfortunately, we're growing at about 8%. Demand's up 14%, so it kind of puts it in perspective. You look behind me, while this looks like a lot of food, that represents about a 20-day supply of food. So while the volume looks like a lot, you know, in terms of the amount of food we're moving through this facility um, each and every month, that represents about 20%. So it gives you a sense of the challenge and the size and the scope, uh, but the reality of it is this is about neighbor helping neighbor, it's about families helping families, and, and that's what food banking has been all about. And it's about all of our partners coming together, whether it's individuals, whether it's the community, whether it's our, our terrific um, industry partners, um, as well as the government, and particularly here in the state of Ohio, who has been a tremendous supporter of food banking for a number of years. Um, I'm going to move on, and first, uh, Lisa hamburg Fugit, who by all means needs no introduction. I think when you think of somebody, you think of somebody that's an advocate for the poor, an advocate for folks, that, you know, making sure that people have enough to eat in this community. She is by far and away um, the champion of that cause. Lisa? Thank you very much, Matt. And again, good morning. My name is Lisa hamler fugit and I serve as the Executive Director of the Ohio Association of Second Harvest Food Bank, an organization that represents 12 food banks that distribute food and grocery items to some 3,000 member charities, including food pantries, soup kitchens, and homeless shelters, and other food assistance organizations across the state located in all 88 counties. I'm joined today not only by our colleagues at the Mid-Ohio Food Bank, but also by Mike Iberis from the Second Harvest Food Bank of the Mahoning Valley, Linda Rumpkin from The Food Bank in Dayton, and Mary O'Shea from the Cleveland Food Bank. We are Ohio's largest charitable response to hunger and have distributed over 97 million pounds of food and grocery items to Ohio in needs last year. Between July 1st and September 30th of this year, our network served more than 1.6 million Ohioans through our network. Of those, 213,000 were seniors and nearly 617,000 of them were children. The data clearly illustrates that Ohio is facing the most extraordinary crisis of all times. The state's emergency food network, a critical safety net for the hungriest of our state's citizens, is on the verge of being unable to meet the unprecedented demand. The network of last resort has fallen victim to a combination of factors that have placed more Ohioans in a position of food insecurity and have left many of our hunger relief agencies with bare shelves and no resources to restock them. Contributing to the dire situation are a number of factors. Unemployment rates are now at a 15-year high, and the announced layoffs in 2009 will hit us even harder. Food costs are up 26% from just last year alone, and this comes at a time when we're seeing thousands of new individuals flooding into our food banks and pantries, many for the first time ever. The increased need for emergency food has grown by more than 
one million requests from 2006 to 2008, and the demand continues to grow. As temperatures drop below freezing, more and more people around the state of Ohio are finding themselves stretching their limited budgets to meet the high cost of heating. In fact, higher utility costs have forced more low-income Ohioans to choose between paying their home heating bills and buying enough food for their family to eat. Food and utilities, two basic necessities that no Ohio family should go without this winter. It is clear that hunger continues to be a reality in the lives of a large number of Ohioans, and too many Ohio Food Bank clients don't know when or if they might have access to food. These are the families that come to Ohio Food Pantries as a lifeline after exhausting all other resources. <laughs> For these reasons, we would like to thank Governor Ted Strickland, along with members of the Ohio General Assembly, for their long history of supporting hunger relief efforts. Ohio's programs for uh, state-funded programs are a model among states that have been praised for its successful public-private partnership. And Governor, thank you so much for your commitment. Additionally, I would like to sincerely thank the Walmart Foundation's leadership for their generous contribution today to make the lives of our clients better. In addition, I want to thank the Walmart associates who are with us today and those across the state who volunteer their time and their talent each month to work in our food pantries, soup kitchens, and food banks serving our needy neighbors. The association and its 12 food banks are very grateful for your generosity and are thankful for your foresight. This donation truly comes at, at no better time.